Mini's forum comes out with its first AMD Strix Point Mini PC, the Elite Mini AI370. And it will be interesting to see how it compares with the first Strix Point Mini we've already looked at. Price, features, and performance will make or break each release, and plenty more are on the way. So, what's the AI370 offering? Well, there have been some interesting changes. Previous AMD flagship from Mini's forum featured a mix of metal and plastic casing, while this one is all plastic. What surprised me during the unboxing is just how light it is compared to the last few hefty flagship mini PCs we've looked at. This one is just 476 grams or one pound. In previous years, Mini's forum had some units with plastic quality that felt below par, but as you'd hope, this one is very fine. While I always prefer metal material, the AI370 looks and feels great. It's one of their nicest mini PC designs yet. The Ryzen AI 370HX is the first AMD 12-core 24-thread part we've seen in these NUX style mini PCs. It also includes AMD's Radeon 890M integrated graphics, a nice generational leap over the 780M, and the best integrated graphics around. AMD's domination, especially in the mobile CPU market, has been one hell of a turnaround, but the scales have flipped so hard that's been bad news for consumers. Lack of real competition from Intel has led to price hikes and it's pretty clear with AMD's Strix Point. While AMD doesn't publicly disclose their CPU pricing like Intel, it's obvious they've increased prices on the AI HX370 far above previous generations, and this increase has filtered down to laptops and minis. So you might have guessed this means the Minis Forum Elite Mini AI370 is higher priced than previous gen flagship units from Minis Forum, and this one comes in at 1,100 US dollars. There's a $50 off coupon and some other bonuses for pre-orders on offer to sweeten the deal. Included is a 1TB SSD and 32GB of LPDDR5X7500 because DDR5 sodium is too damn slow. Maybe once C sodium shows up in the market, we'll have a faster replaceable alternative. Although even that is launching at 6400 mega transfers, which will cause the GPU to take a hit to performance. Anyway, at this price, the Elite Mini AI370 is going to be for a specific need, as you can get the Mini's Forum G7 PT for a little more, and that's a powerful gaming mini PC with a dedicated GPU. I'll link the review to it at the end of the video. Inside the box, you'll find a compact 120 watt power supply, Visamount, and HDMI. On the front, there's a reset hole next to the power button, audio jack, USB 4, which worked fine for power and display using my USB-C monitor. Although having it on the front isn't ideal if you're planning to ditch the included power supply. There's also two USB 3 10 gigabit on the front with another two on the back. The HDMI port supports up to 8K 60Hz, as does the display port and USB 4 for a maximum of three displays natively. Both LAN ports are Realtek 2.5 gigabit and unfortunately no Wi-Fi 7 here. Instead, there's a killer Wi-Fi 6E chip. Some will be disappointed with a lack of Oculink port since the previous couple of flagships included it. Okay, let's see what's on offer inside it. Would you look at that? Mini's forum has taken my previous criticism on board and moved the screws away from the rubber feet. See folks, the system works. After four screws, it's actually the top of the Mini that comes off. There's a fan for cooling the storage drives and Thermal pads are included for both M.2 Gen 4 and VME slots. Under the main one is the M.2 Wi-Fi card. Windows 11 Pro is included and the OS is malware free. The LTS edition of Ubuntu worked fine off a USB drive if you don't want to use Windows. We've looked at one Strix Point Mini PC so far, the B-Link Sur 9, and it featured the same CPU, so there's a good comparison point. In Cinebench, the Mini's Forum AI370 was a couple of percent behind the other Mini. In Multicore though, there's a more significant drop, especially if you compare the performance modes. It's 10% behind. Geekbench shows a similar trend, slightly behind the Sur9 in single core and a bigger margin in multicore with both power modes. So it's not all that surprising that in video encoding, the AI370 is also a bit behind in both power modes. The AV1 test takes much longer, and the margin widens. When we offload the AV1 video encoding work to the integrated graphics, 
the AI 370 is again slightly behind the SO9. Surprisingly, 3D Mark also shows lower GPU performance even with the same DDR5 mega transfer speeds between the minis. The SO9 is faster by 4% in DX11 and 5% in DX12 Time Spy. While the biggest surprise came with Steel Nomad, where the SO9 is 10% ahead of the minis form AI370. Okay, that's the benchmarks, so let's check them out side by side and see if there are any big differences. In the previous Strix Point review, there were a bunch of requests for game tests. I've decided to take up one of them, which is to see how Strix Point performs with and without FSR image upscaling, and I'll add in the SO9 results as well. Each game uses the balance setting for FSR with no frame generation. Ghost of Tsushima does show a hit to the frame rate for the AI370 compared to the SO9, and FSR allows you to get above 60 FPS. Cyberpunk has almost identical performance, although the Minis Forum wins out in 1% lows. This game takes such a big hit visually with FSR that I wouldn't use it. There's lots of shimmering added to the image quality, especially on the light posts. Robocop is a tie again with a tiny 1% low win for the Minis Forum, but we'll add that to the margin of error. With FSR on, it's a much more playable experience. Again, identical performance in Hellblade 2. FSR upscaling really helps with the frame rate in this game. You should not have come here, child. This dark land, it pushes back. God of War Ragnarok matches the graphics benchmarks at native. Space Marine 2 shows the least benefit from FSR, only improving the FPS by 15% or so. Another test we look at is making sure the USB 4 port works fine, and here I'm using an eGPU with an RTX 3070. AMD's latest chip makes for a great compact emulation box, going up to the PS3 Wii U era. But is it powerful enough to play PS2, GameCube and Wii at 4K? Yes, but depends on the game. Something easier to emulate like Tekken Tag Tournament or Mario Kart Wii work great. While Gran Turismo 4 and Need for Speed Most Wanted play pretty well with bouts of slowdown. AMD's Strix Point also emulates PS3 games fine, but let's test it with something difficult to emulate, such as Killzone 2. Still not there for 1080p 30fps, but it's playable. Wii U across the board should be full speed, with Breath of the Wild running at almost double its original frame rate and at a higher resolution. Latency Mon checks for possible dropouts during audio production. I look for a worst case scenario by running Cinebench in the background. As you can see, it fails the test with bouts of high latency where other minis have passed. 4K video editing works well. You have the latest export times with the HX370 of any mini PC this size, and AMD's media engine is powerful enough to handle 4K editing even if Intel's is still superior. The BIOS is pretty limited, few options to choose from and you can change the power mode. In hardware monitor, you can switch the fan profile. It's not possible to overclock the memory to 8000 mega transfers like with the B-Link SIR 9, nor change the amount of VRAM, which is set to 8GB by default. 
The Bluetooth range on Mini's forum's latest is the best result so far, and Wi-Fi range using the 5G band at 12 meters or 39 feet passed without any network connection issue notifications from the Valorant client while playing a full game session. Idle power draw is very low at 7 watts. The maximum is lower than the Beelink Sur 9 and explains the performance numbers. You might have guessed that's because the maximum temp is pretty high at 95C under load with both power modes and thermal throttling kicks in. Mini Forum's AI370 is very quiet at idle and about Intel NUC noise level under a full core load, which is above average in this stack. Although the fan pitch is a bit more pleasant. Also, the higher power limit increases fan noise a bit further. And the volume chart shows it's a pretty compact box and is below average in size. Alright, so conclusion time. Mini's Forum's AI370 is their nicest looking Mini yet, and another addition to the upcoming Minis with the best performing CPU for this form factor. It's also the first Strix Point Mini with dual 2.5 gigabit LAN. Accessory wise, it includes a compact power supply and VESA mount. The biggest problem is price. Port selection is pretty average, Oculink has been dropped which would make it stand out, and there are limited BIOS options such as the ability to change memory speeds. Finally, there's not much of a performance jump using the performance profile due to thermal throttling. So I'd just stick to balanced. And that's the Mini's Forum AI370, featuring AMD's latest and greatest. Definitely best suited for those looking for the most powerful CPU in a very small form factor. But for those wanting to game or looking for a powerful, bigger, but still small workstation, the Adaman G7PT has a lot more horsepower for a bit more cash and represents good value. Check out that mini PC review right here. Cheers!